Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we are taking a look at the cult classic Lost Boys. From the amazing reoccurring songs played just at the right times, to night shots of amusement rides and lights, concerts with burn barrels and motorcycle rides on the beach, so many memorable moments in this movie. This is not only one of my favorite vampire movies but also just one of my favorite movies in general. Before we get started, if you enjoy videos on vampire movies, be sure to check out my other videos and maybe subscribe. Let's get started. We see some teenagers giving some people a hard time on an amusement ride, walking into the ride like they own the place, almost starting a fight with some guy over his girlfriend, until a security guard catches them and tells them, I thought I told you to stay off the boardwalk, and makes them leave. They leave without a problem, but later that night we see that same security guard walking to his car and is attacked by something unseen that flies down at him rips his car door off and takes him away. The next scene is a family driving together and arriving at Santa Carla, a single mother with her two kids, Sam and Michael. Wow, 80s fashion really has come back. This kind of montage of the town and the people in it really sets the vibe of how you're supposed to think of the town. Lots of beach and amusement park rides, a nice weather, bright sun, a stark contrast to the dark underbelly of Santa Carla. This is on display as soon as they drive past the sign of Santa Carla. On the front is a nice welcoming piece of art, and on the back it's covered with graffiti and has giant letters that say murder capital of the world. When they arrive at the house, Sam is upset there's no TV, and Michael asks his grandfather if it's true that Santa Carla is the murder capital of the world, to which his grandfather replies, well there's some bad elements around here. Next we see Sam and Michael at a concert. This guy looks like a jazz musician mixed with a WWE wrestler. At this concert is where Michael meets Star for the first time, who becomes his love interest for the movie. Sam and Michael's mother goes to a local VHS store to get a job, and this is where she first meets the owner Max. While they are talking, the kids from the beginning of the movie enter the store, and he tells them, I thought I told you not to come in here anymore, and gives them a very stern look. So these guys aren't welcome in very many places. While exploring, Sam finds a comic book store and meets some kids inside, the Frog Brothers, Edgar and Alan. After they make a comment about Sam's clothing, Sam impresses them with his knowledge of Superman. One of the brothers hands him a vampire comic, to which Sam replies, I don't like horror comics, but he says, you might like this one, it could save your life. The grandfather shows Sam his car, to which he gets pretty excited about, but right when he thinks they're going to go for a ride, his grandfather says, let's go to town, but then shuts the car off abruptly. Sam says, I thought we were going to go to town, but his grandfather says, this is as close to town as I like to get. It seems like there are at least some people that live in the town that are aware of what's going on. His grandpa definitely knows more than what he's letting on, and there's also missing people posters everywhere. We even see someone putting up a missing poster of the security guard that was killed in the beginning of the movie. This is something very subtle that you might not notice on first viewing, but it's a very cool touch. Sam later returns to the comic book store, and Alan asks him if he's noticed anything weird about Santa Carla yet. They then explain they are fighters for truth, justice, and the American way, and that working at their parents' comic book store is just a front for what they really do. He again tries to give him the vampire comic book, and Sam again reminds him that he doesn't like horror comics, but he tells Sam to think of it more as a survival manual. He says their number is on the back, but pray you don't have to call us. While Michael is chasing an attractive girl he keeps seeing around town, he ends up meeting David, the leader of these lost boys. Michael has his first interaction with the vampires when David sees him about to go on a bike ride with Star. David makes Star get back onto his bike, and he asks Michael if he knows where Hudson's Point is over the bluff. To which Michael replies, I can't beat your bike. We know Michael and his family do not have a lot of money, so David's bike is probably a lot more expensive and faster than Michael's. But David says, you don't have to beat me. You just have to keep up. They all take off on their bikes down the beach towards Hudson's Point. I'm unsure if David was interested in Michael just because Star was, or if David would have sought him out otherwise. The guys are all speeding really fast towards the bluff and it's really foggy so Michael can't see that well. They continue to say, come on Michael, and get him to almost drive off the edge as a joke which Michael doesn't appreciate. Michael punches David in the face and demands he fights him one on one for almost killing him, but David barely reacts, only asking him, how far are you willing to go Michael? He then takes Michael into their hangout slash hideout spot which is one of my favorite locations in the movie. David says that it was the nicest hotel in Santa Carla about 85 years ago but it was built on a fault. And in 1906, when the earthquake hit San Francisco, the ground opened up and this place took a header right into the crack. And now it's theirs. We don't know how old David is, so it's possible that he could have frequented this hotel before the earthquake. 
They proceed to eat some food in the sunken hotel, and Michael is handed a box of rice to eat. After he starts eating, David says, how are those maggots? You're eating maggots, Michael. How do they taste? And when he looks, his rice is now maggots, and he spits it out all over the ground. But when he looks back, it's just rice. David says, sorry about that. No hard feelings? He then offers Michael some noodles, but when he looks at them, they're worms, to which he seems disgusted by. But then David quickly sifts through the box with his chopsticks saying, they're worms, and begins to eat them, and to Michael's surprise, they're just noodles again. I don't think David was literally transforming the food into worms and then into noodles again. I think he was just making Michael see those things like an illusion. So these vampires do have some supernatural-like abilities, like making people see things that aren't there and might possess other abilities like compulsion. While in the sunken hotel, David brings out a special, ornate-looking bottle containing the blood of the head vampire. The boys chant, Michael, Michael, as he unknowingly drinks the blood, beginning his descent. The vampires of Lost Boys are immortal and cannot be killed by regular means. Although David says to maintain your immortality, you must feed. They are weak to sunlight, stakes through the heart, holy water, and although in the movie the Frog Brothers think they are weak to garlic, this vampire laughs at them and says garlic doesn't work. They are also not seen being harmed by crosses. When a vampire is exposed to sunlight, their skin bursts into flames. As Edgar Frog says, when a vampire is killed, no two bloodsuckers grow out the same way. Some go out screaming, some go out quietly, some implode, some explode, and we see some of these different deaths on display during the movie. The vampires seem to be able to hide their vampiric appearance when they want to blend in with society, but can also look like this. Sporting traditional vampire fangs, and their face also changing in shape slightly, making them more beast-like. They have the ability to fly, or maybe more accurately, float. They can become weightless and hover in the air and move around. They also seem to be able to take the form of a bat. Although it is never seen on screen, we get these first-person flying scenes with bat noises, so it is implied that they are taking the form of bats. They have immense strength and speed. Their abilities seem to vary a bit, but some vampires are seen being able to move so fast it resembles teleportation. It could actually be teleportation, but I think it's just very fast movement. They are also seen being able to rip the door off and tear the roof off of a car and pick people up with ease. They have advanced healing abilities like most immortals. We can see this when Michael gets bitten by Sam's dog and when he looks at his hand the next morning, the wound is completely healed. It's a little unclear of how grievous of a wound they could heal from. But the vampires do also have some supernatural abilities as I said earlier. When Michael is turning into a vampire, you can hear David's voice in his head like some kind of telepathy. Also, David was able to make Michael see those illusions in the sunken hotel of his food turning into worms and maggots. Edgar says that vampires must sleep in a coffin, but they find them hanging from the ceiling like bats. His reasoning for this is that the sunken hotel as a whole functions as a coffin to them. These vampires must be invited into a home that is owned by a mortal. If they are not invited, they will physically not be able to enter because of their curse. But they can still enter public buildings like a store or a library or something. The people we see turned into vampires in the movie are turned by drinking the blood of the head vampire, in this case Max. So you must drink a vampire's blood to be turned. They bite people only to feed. To turn someone into a full vampire, they must be drained of their blood and then fed vampire blood. If they are not drained first, then the person becomes a half vampire, which is what Michael, Star, and the child were. This is why when the head vampire was killed, they turned back into humans, because they are only half vampires. Half vampires do not burst into flames when exposed to sunlight like full vampires, but they still tend to avoid it. It might still cause some form of discomfort, which is why we always see Michael wearing his sunglasses and sleeping all day. Half vampires are seen having all the same abilities that a full vampire does, even becoming more monstrous in appearance when enraged. Michael can fly just like David and Star is seen moving almost instantly into their window. It is said in the movie that if a half vampire feeds, they can become a full vampire, and Star says that her thirst is getting stronger and stronger and she won't be able to fight it much longer. When someone starts becoming a vampire, their thirst for blood becomes almost unbearable and causes Michael to try to attack his own brother. So the fact that Star has been able to not feed and has been a half vampire much longer than Michael is surprising. Also when Michael walks in front of a mirror, he appears translucent almost like a ghost compared to his brother. It's possible a full vampire wouldn't show up in a mirror at all. 
One of my favorite scenes of Michael turning into a vampire is when they climb under the train bridge and hang from it. The other vampires start dropping one by one and Michael is panicking until he hears their voices down below the fog. When Michael lets go, we never actually see him hit the ground. Instead, we see him in a trance-like state falling through the fog and then he wakes up in his bed and from that point, he's never the same. The head vampire Max, aka the owner of the video store, is the leader of the vampires of Santa Carla. Although he is the leader, he prefers to rule in secret as he lets David be their leader as far as everyone is concerned. He is physically far stronger than the other vampires and is probably considerably older, possibly by hundreds or maybe even thousands of years. Sam reads in the vampire comic that some vampires use hellhounds to guard them while they sleep. Max has a dog that is almost always seen with him and when Sam and Michael's mom tries to go to Max's house in the daytime, the dog tries to attack her viciously. Sam's dog, Anouk, was also able to tell when Michael was becoming a vampire and became vicious toward him after that. So animals can seemingly tell who is a vampire. Because Max is a vampire, although he is strong, he can still not enter someone's home without invitation. But once he is invited into a home, not only can he enter, but traditional vampire weaknesses seem to have no effect on him. After Max is invited to Sam's house for dinner, Sam and the Frog Brothers try to figure out if he's a vampire. First, they put garlic in his food, but as I already said, we know these vampires actually aren't weak to garlic. Sam then spills a cup of holy water he had on the table onto his lap, but nothing happens. We see other vampires get burned by holy water like it's acid. Lastly, they put a mirror up to his face, but he appears normal, not like Michael did. So because he was invited into the home, he was immune to all these typical weaknesses, I'm assuming only while he's inside this home. If you haven't seen Lost Boys, I can't recommend it enough. While obviously giving a lot of spoilers, I've intentionally left some things out so you could hopefully still watch the movie now with some more information and enjoy it even more. It's a vampire movie with horror elements that at times feels like the Goonies when Sam and the Frog Brothers are slaying vampires mixed with 80s nostalgia love story between Michael and Star. It sounds like there's a lot going on, but at the same time it never feels like too much. The movie was inspired by Peter Pan, which is why the Lost Boys of Neverland have some similarities to the Lost Boys of Santa Carla. Boys without parents, that don't age, and don't want to grow up. There are two other Lost Boys movies that star Edgar Frog as the main character as he helps people in situations similar to Sam and Michael. Thanks so much for watching, drop a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you haven't, I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.